Welcome to The Karmic Path with your hosts, Tina Irwin and Laura Van Tyne. Join us as we dive into the normal and the paranormal to break through the darkness and to help you realize how karma, spiritual law, and psychic ability all combine to open the doors of understanding. This is the place where we build the karmic connections between science, psychology, and spirituality. But can we change our karmic path? Can we help someone else's karma? Stay tuned and join us for an opportunity to look at life and spirituality from a down-to-earth, no-nonsense, practical perspective. The Karmic Path Radio Show with Laura and Tina, Better Karma for Better Living, starts now. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tina Irwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Laura Van Tyne. Our passion is helping the dead, which is ultimately why in our heart of hearts, we're ghost helpers, not ghost hunters. And it's a karmic thing, too. Karma is also our passion. With yeah, that. I, I was going to finish the sentence. Were you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> our karmic path okay. is helping the dead and understanding the paranormal. So thank you for sharing the journey of understanding the mysterious marriage of the normal in the paranormal world. Okay, so Laura had a very interesting discussion yeah, with a so, friend who works so I in have, retail. I have a friend of mine who works in retail, and you know we started talking because she had a concern. And we decided this concern is so valid and common that we thought, well, let's just pivot this week's show to this topic. And that was she kept she's like, she when she was on the cash cash register, she would bring up the, the totals of nine nine eleven, and then you know one two three four five, which was like her her uh, uncle's street address. And I'm changing some of the facts because if she has a relative listening, I don't want them to freak out. So <laughs> I hope I get my fake facts straight, but they're real facts. <laughs> okay. So she keeps ringing up these two numbers. It's been going on for about a month now. And she's like, you know, it's been interesting to her. And she's wondering about it. But then she had a dream where she was reading this person's obituary. And now she's alarmed because a few months ago, she had a premonition about her dog who was going to die and her dog did die. So, you know, she's asking me, should she tell this family member um, about this? And, you know, should she tell them? Should she warn them? And that's a really good question because there's so many different ways that we can go about this because, gosh darn it, we have free will. Well, we have free will and hopefully wisdom. <clears throat> we have emotional intelligence yes. and wisdom. And if you, and that's, that's really part of the cornerstone of this particular discussion is understanding there are some really preferable ways to handle it. If you have a premonition about something in ways that are, may not be in your best interest or so, anybody else's right, best interest. And she's saying, should I tell this relative that I'm having all of these these concerns that they're going to die. And, you know, my first, and she's a very compassionate, kind person wants to do the right thing. And it's a really valid question also. And she says, you know, and I'm talking to her, I said, well, it would make that person very panicky. Could that information actually cause an accident or something to end their life before it should have also? Well, are you creating a reality? Right. And there are, again, many ways to approach it. And so I think one of the, maybe one way is to discuss what happened to you personally. Right. And I did talk to her about that. So, you know, I don't live my life by regrets, but I do have this one thing about myself that I I wish I had handled better. And, you know, there is no learning and perfection, of course, but um, a number of years ago when my kids were little, my, my dad was, he retired and his new hobby was how to find cheap airfare around the world. Okay. So I swear to God, he could go, he could fly from Michigan to Vegas for like $9 and 99 cents. <laughs> so he, he calls me up one day and let me preface this with that whole prior year was a really difficult year for us because my, both of my husband's parents died within months of each other. And so we always host Thanksgiving. And so this was our year of first. This was the year of first without both grandparents, not just one, but both. 
And so every birthday is now different. Every every holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, et cetera. And we're coming up upon Thanksgiving. And my dad says, I've got these amazing cheap flights to go to Vegas. Will you, will you and your family come out and join us and do Thanksgiving in Vegas? Now I'm thinking it's not quite my idea of a great time, but um, that sounds great. I mean, he's close by. It's only a few hours drive from San Diego. And so we get there and we meet them in the hotel lobby and the girls all go rushing up to, you know, grant their grandpa and they're, you know, hugging and having a great time. And, um, my dad turns into a little kid instantaneously around them. My youngest is not quite five. And my oldest is nine, about nine. So they're still little. And, my stepmom and I are hanging back while they're having this little reunion thing here. And I look at my dad and I look at her and I just blurted out, Oh my God, what's wrong with my dad? And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, he's going to die. He's going to die soon. What is going on with him? And she's like, what are you talking about? He's got a back. He had a backache on the airplane. He's fine. You know? And And I was so stunned and freaked out. And I, you know, what ended up happening and I was so alarmed this whole week and I couldn't get past it. It was just, and and I tried to panic feeling. It was very panicky because, you know, we just lost two grandparents. We don't losing another one, especially my dad was kind of like the sucker punch of a lifetime, honestly. And what ended up happening was my dad went home from that long weekend. And within a week he went to the emergency room for a backache and he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So I basically had a premonition about his death, but what I did do was well, I... Well, Rebecca, okay. how soon, what is the distance between the time that you you had the premonition and his actual death? Six weeks. Six weeks, because yeah. pancreatic cancer can strike very quickly. And so, <clears throat> and you went out to see him a week before he died, correct? I did. Well, he get he gets this diagnosis of, of pancreatic cancer and did my conversation with my stepmom about him, about saying he is going to die, did that affect her hope? Did that affect her emotional being at that point in time? You see, and that's where, I, you know, I wasn't meaning to be cruel, but in a way it was cruel of me to do that. It's it's hard for me to say how and no one could say, oh, well, because you said this, that happened to her. The, the reality was psychically, let's back up just a little bit and talk about what was mm-hmm. happening psychically. And you had no idea that your psychic ability was going to kick in at this point. And that's exactly what happened. Sometimes psychic ability kicks in and on a certain level, it was warning you this is coming. Right. So you ended up with unfortunately only six weeks to prepare but you're you were warned that's partly what this was it was a warning the second element was learning how to handle it I, i'm telling you when you have a premonition like this it kind of smacks you yeah you have, it's intense it's very very intense and you're thinking about your own emotion and it's as if you can see into the future of it's sort of the, that's why we use the image. You could see way into the future on that photograph of Monument Valley that we used on this week's episode. When you can see into the future to that degree, and in your mind it wasn't survivable, you could already see yeah, that future it was, coming. It, there was no way around this. This this was a, yeah. an inevitability. However, your question is. Could you have handled it better? Right. Because you upset your stepmother and you dearly adore her. You didn't want to do that. Right. And the answer is, well, uh, yes, you upset her. That's the reality. She was going to be upset anyway because this was coming. And perhaps a better way to look at it is sitting down with them. Right. I could have taken a deep breath, and which is what we always talk about on the show. Take a deep breath. Pause. Gain your composure and then say something like. Or call your friend. Yeah. But I wasn't your friend. (laughs) You you didn't exist back then. (laughs) I didn't exist. But get your composure. The problem is when you're having a psychic uh, moment or premonition, 
you don't run, you don't have a Rolodex, which is an old fashioned term. You don't have a contact list. That's what it is. <laughs> a contact list of who are my psychic friends I can talk to. And the problem is it hits you so hard. You are thrown out of balance. Well, back then I was a psychic in a closet. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't really talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I. If, but if you had said, you know, let's. What's her name? My stepmom? Yeah. Stepmom. Stepmom. <laughs> your step. If you had given your stepmom. Brenda. Brenda. If you had yeah. taken her aside and said, look, I, you know, I can't explain this feeling. I think you should have dad seen as soon as you get back. You should go to a doctor. Right. And, and I have this weird feeling. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it means. But just to clear up my feeling and just to clear up anything that might be coming, yeah. maybe we can forestall something. Would you do that for me? And if and if it's nothing, then he just went to the doctor and he was told everything is just fine. Right. And that would have been a much more logical approach. I, I, and I and know in that mind, yeah. it would have been yeah. a kinder way yes, to do it yes. instead of it hit you and you kind of echoed it into her. Oh, oh, definitely. Without a doubt, without a doubt. But what it did do is it helped me with my friend to give her some advice that I didn't have at the time. Right. So this was my experience. And, you know, Maybe, and I told my friend, I said, well, you could just call and ask how they're doing. You could say something along the lines of, hey, I've been thinking about you. How are you feeling? And that kind of thing and see if anything comes up with that conversation. The the problem is, and I think that that's the best way to handle it. And um, uh, I think that as we're looking at the energy of a future event, Sometimes these future events come into our consciousness in a variety of ways. And I think we have so much to cover this week. We're going to kind of blow through this particular break. We're just going to keep right on going. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> I know she's letting us know, you know, you're at your break time, but we're going to keep see going if we right can through go that. Through. Yeah. And you don't have, you don't necessarily have control over when it hits you any more than your, your, you know, one of our, our listeners had any control over the fact that these things were happening. What was really good is she's paying attention to them. Right. And this is where this is a really important thing. Pay attention, pay attention and use your intuition. Um, we, in fact, if you go to the karmic path.com, we offer a free online course about intuition, the secret science of intuition and check out that class because it's really, really helpful. And it's packed full of information. A lot of those online courses, You sit for an hour and you have it on double speed, you know, talking speed because there's really not much in there. But this is full of all kinds of nuggets. So check that out, because when we listen to our intuition, we open up our psychic abilities and it helps to keep us safe. That's really the it's (laughs) should be our tagline. Psychic ability helps to keep you safe and it can help you to work through situations that you might not have anticipated. And sometimes some a premonition that you receive can be so traumatic that you really can't rush up and say to say it to someone that happened to me uh, many many years ago I had a premonition that one of my sister's daughters was going to die and it was crystal clear and I could see the ambulance go down the street and I'm standing nearby I'm standing with an angel and they're showing this to me. This is coming. And I tried to find out when is it coming? Which daughter? How does this happen? And they just said, we can't tell you. But you're going to have to assist her with this entire event. And it's going to be difficult, but it's going to be very important on many levels. A death is not always as tragic as it seems. A lot of Things, some of them very positive things, come from a person's death. And an, a point to remember is sometimes the soul leaves when it's the correct time, even if for each of us it doesn't feel like it was the correct time. There's so much more they could have done. It's what happens, even if yeah. the death is happens tragically. And so getting back to the premonition. I had no control over that. I saw it several times. And then when the death actually took place, everything that I'd seen in the premonition was just, it was just laid out exactly as I had seen it. 
unfortunately or fortunately. Yeah. Now, Laura, I, you had a positive. Oh, yeah. So, OK, so premonitions don't always have to be about a death or some tragedy. I have had, you know, we have a friend of ours who is the host of Inner Journey, Greg Friedman, um, out of the station of Laguna. And we were on his show a couple of years ago. And if you're listening, Greg, hello. And we were talking about crossing over the dead. And he looks at us. He's like, you're ghost helpers, not ghost hunters. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's that's so true. And so literally I go home that night and I Google ghost helpers and somebody ghosthelpers.com and somebody had already had that domain. I'm like, uh, oh, well, a year goes by and I literally I feel this tap on my shoulder and it wasn't me. It wasn't her, not even from a psychic remote view tab. <laughs> and somebody says to me and I'm listening, look for ghosthelpers.com. And I go online, I look for ghosthelpers.com and it's available. And I thought. Huh. So I called our uh, ISP person and I said, hey, I want to buy this domain. He's like, wow, that just went for sale 10 minutes ago. And I was like, totally stoked. So we get this name, ghosthelpers.com. This is two years ago now. And I get the, and when that happened and I actually secured, it took a month to secure the domain because it goes to auction and they have to do this and that and whatever. Okay. I get the domain and I keep having these visions of Tina and myself in these particular clothes, in this particular position. And Kat, if you don't mind, um, throw that up on the on the screen there. And if you're listening on an app or a device, you can go to the Karmic Path on Instagram or on Facebook and you'll see this image. So Dr. Pat at Transformation Talk Radio and Kim created this logo right or this this jpeg for us for a new show that we're creating it hasn't gone out yet but this image that they created is exactly the image i have had in my head for two years when i saw that i about fell on the floor everything there was exactly how i saw it except for tina's red glasses they weren't red so, you know, some are always always on point, but that was pretty darn close, let me tell you. So that was a really cool premonition, and we'll be talking more about the Ghost Helper show a little bit in the next week or so, but that image is exactly what I had in my head. Okay. So I, did it exist in the future? I believe that part of what happens with a premonition goes back to string theory physics it goes back to physics if you're not familiar with string theory string theory and i'm not a physicist so i'm going to give you kind of a clumsy description of it but basically and this goes back to the hawaiian huna tradition of aka chords and akashic records it's all kind of and we explain this in soul evolution past lives karmic time oh you know oh, wait, what? wait stop stop, yeah. stop the presses we have something important to say we totally forgot about this um the book Soul Evolution, Past Lives and Karmic Ties as of yesterday is now available as an audiobook. And I am so stoked because, man, I worked hard on that. You did. You worked night and day to make I, this I happen. had three, two, two failed attempts, I think, with, with ACX and I finally got it right. It was a huge learning curve. I'm not an audiophile. I don't have a degree in sound engineering, but I figured it out. So good job. if you have a subscription to Audible... We'd love for you to check out this book as or you'd an like audiobook. To start a subscription to Audible because we're putting all of our books on as audiobooks. Yes. So now that I figured out the secret sauce, and you know what's really funny about that is that I told my family about it. I'm like, yeah, now girls, if you want ever want to go back to when you were little and I would read you bedtime stories, all you got to do is download this book, and it's like I'm there because I don't live with us anymore. And they just looked at me on Facetime and rolled their eyes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I want to do two things. I want okay. to go back to the original question from the listener. Friend. And she was a friend. She was a friend. <laughs> she listens to, though. She listens to. And so her question was, should she tell her? Yeah. And I think that to answer her question, because we do think she might be listening today, she may want to go back to her aunt and say, I have this funny feeling. Well, I called it an uncle. Uncle. Because <laughs> I'm screwing up all day. <laughs> It says aunt, right? I know, there. but I said uncle. Anyways, she should go back to her relative. 
and suggests that maybe she should get checked out. She has this weird feeling. She doesn't quite know what it is. And, yeah. you know, would she just humor her and get checked out just, just because, because yeah. yes, you can change a possible future. And there, as we, I mean, we have so much to discuss the premonitions. We may go into the second week with it. And the point of it is that, yes, you can change a possible future because some futures are meant to be changed and some futures are so powerful they cannot be changed and the energy echoes back and forth, and, which is going to take us back to string theory. Okay. We're going to complete that loop. All right. I wanted to make sure we answered her because we were grateful that she asked such a critically important question, something we get frequently. So back to string theory. Uh, Where I'm going with this is, it sounds like I'm on this long road, but the concept is if you ring a bell here on Earth. Or on your other planet that you live on? On my other planet. (laughs) It's not my home planet. I have another planet. And And it's across the galaxy and you need warp drive to get there. And you have two bells and they're far apart. As soon as you ring one, the other one will ring because if they are connected through something astrophysicists call string, they are connected. We call it Aka chords because it goes back to the Hawaiian Huna tradition <clears throat> of Aka chords that is this thin blue strand of connection that connects us to every person we've ever met, every place we've ever been, everything we've ever touched. And because we have those connections, as something happens and it vibrates, it comes back to you. Some of that's mental telepathy. Some of that's premonition. Not all premonitions are negative. They're not all positive. They're not all about death. There are some that you get to know about because you can change. And some that you get to know about for a reason reason that is not fathomable to me, that you can do nothing to change. You All you can do is be conscious of it. And it's hard. I I have had premonitions all my life, and some of them are really, really hard. So let's talk about how do premonitions come to Okay, you? how do they, how, what are some signs that it could be a premonition, I guess, is a really good question before we go on to break here in a few minutes. So one of the things is just simply listening to yourself and, and being in tune. And sometimes it can become as a dream, some, but there are all kinds of dreams sure. and you wake up from them and, you know, it goes away. You don't remember them. You know, it's a premonition based on several factors. Number one, it's so real. You are there. And when you wake up, you remember every single detail. Those are the first two factors. The dream begins to recur. You have it again. And then each night you get one more piece of information and another and another. And in Ghost Stories from the Ghost Point of View, Volume 3, there are two stories, my personal stories, of premonitions. And I'm not going to give those stories away because it, there's, they're really, really good stories. And in one of them, I could change the future. And in one of them, I could not. And it describes my personal agony (laughs) of dealing with these two unbelievably dynamic premonitions. The one that you couldn't change the future of is called A Rainy Night of Tears. The Rainy Night of Tears was really powerful. And the one you did change the future of is called... Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I've written 63 ghost stories and I can't remember every title of them. Be that as it okay, may. Okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to throw you under the bus like that. I, did, I should remember that. It will. Um, I, I remember thinking. It's another good story. How's that? It's a really good story. But let's go to back to the recurring dream because a lot of people have this recurring dream. And so I suggest that you get a notebook and you write it down. Not all recurring dreams occur, but if. And But if it begins to happen frequently enough, then you may have to do something about it. So and when you do get these dreams and you write it down, you're looking for patterns and you're looking for clues. Yes, you're also in the clue part. The clue part can also be you get another piece of information each night. Each night, something else is revealed and something else is revealed. So the first point of first method of premonition is it comes to you in recurring dreams over several nights. It could be even a couple months. 
The second way it hits you, and I use the word hit you, is it's called a, a waking vision. And, and you keep seeing it, you keep sensing it, and you're doing ordinary things. You're at your desk, you're doing your work, you're driving, and this it's a waking vision. You keep seeing it happen again and again and again. Again, when you get to a safe place, write it down. So <clears throat> let's talk about a story of... A all right, well, we're going to roll into break here in a, in a minute, so... Let's do that. So, All right, we are we're talking about premonitions and what constitutes a premonition and what can we do about the premonition. And when we come back... We're going to talk about some examples and some things that we've gone through. And if you've had a premonition, um, shoot us an email at questions of the karmic path. We'd love to hear from it, hear from you about it. And also you can write, um, if you're on Facebook live, we'll watch it. We'll get it there too. Um, and we want to thank the oil lounge for sponsoring the show for us today. And we will be right back. You are listening to the karmic path on transformation talk radio. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden, inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Tap into the wisdom of animals, angels, and masters with Darcy Pariso on Animal Soul Wisdom Radio. Tune in monthly as Darcy brings insights on how to better understand and deepen our relationships with animals. Working with light and pureness of ancient techniques, Darcy, healer, animal communicator, and medium, is here to guide you through this process and provide inspiration to move forward. For more information about working with Darcy, visit DarcyPariso.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific Time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Learn and explore fascinating and practical uses of essential oils, how to use them, and how they can enhance your everyday life. The Oil Lounge was founded by three remarkable women with fascinating stories about how essential oils changed their lives. Tina and Laura from The Karmic Path have joined forces to educate the masses in the benefits of young living essential oils. For more information, visit theoillounge.com. to the karmic path on transformation talk radio we're talking about premonitions and we've talked about premonitions you know of the premonition i had of my dad where i couldn't change the outcome but tina has a really good story that illustrates what can happen that can things you can do to change the outcome so not everything is set in stone 
And by the way, before we get started, Tina ran down, ran and got the book Ghost Stories and the Ghost Point of View and found the title of the story we're talking about. It's called The Greatest, it's called The Greatest Gift. <clears throat> And the first one is The Greatest Gift, and the second one is A Rainy Night of Tears. So those are two pretty compelling premonition stories Premonition stories yeah. that, will, that will linger with you for a while. All right. all right, so tell us about what you had happen to you. Having had premonitions all my life, this one was sticks out in my mind as particularly chilling for me. And we had just moved to San Diego. We hadn't been here very long. And it was a fall, and I guess towards September, late September, October, I started having this recurring dream. And I have a, a two brothers and a sister, you know, at the time. And one brother lives in North Carolina, and the other brother was living in L.A. And I'm close to all my siblings. And so in this particular premonition, I start having a dream. And it shows me that my, I'll call him my mountain brother, is is going to die and he's going to be in this terrible accident. And every night I get another view And one night. It shows him terrified. And it's like, I can see him at night pacing so afraid and that it's almost like something's haunting him and he's just going nuts. He can't stand it. And his fear becomes so enormous and and so I go to go, you know, I wake up and I'm really troubled by this. So the next night I see that he's in um, a car and that he it's 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 raining and he's not paying attention and he is he's killed in this car. And then in the next dream, it's now Thanksgiving and we're all assembled for his funeral. And I can see us walking to the graveyard and, you know, it's dreary and wintry and it's, it's this, it's so alarming. Like it was for your dad. So alarming. So I called my LA brother and I said, you know, I, I don't want to call, you know, I don't want to call my mountain brother up and say, Hey dude, I keep seeing that you're going to die. What am I going to do about this? <laughs> that would suck. It's not the kind of phone call anybody wants to receive. Not, no, it isn't. And so, um, so we talked about it and every day, I mean, I'm getting more and more and more detail down to what he's wearing. And, and he said, you know, this is a really powerful premonition. You have to do something about it. I said, I know. I'm just trying to figure out what to how, do. Just like our, our listeners contacted us. What do you do about this? I was really in a quandary. So, you know, uh, Pierre and I discussed it at great length and I, I decided that I would call my mountain brother and kind of feel him out a little bit. And I, so I did that. I called him up one day when I had some time and I said, you know, I keep, I, I wanted to ask you, how are you feeling? He said, I don't think I'm feeling great. I said, okay, you know, check that one off. Not feeling great. And I said, well, how else are you feeling? He said, I just don't think I can discuss this with anybody, but maybe I can tell you. It's like, okay, <laughs> talk to me here because I really need you to talk to me. And he says, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel as if something terrible is coming. All right. He wanted to talk about it. It opened a doorway by my not blurting it out, but by saying, how are you feeling? And he said, I guess I should just say, I feel like I'm going to die soon. And I thought, okay, that's what I'm, I'm hearing his thoughts. I'm feeling what he's feeling. He said, give me some more information. He said, I, I have a, it's like I got a gun by the door. I'm so concerned. I, I, I feel like something's going to come for me, but I, I don't understand what it is. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really desperate. And I said, so when did this start? Because things have a beginning. Something there's when you have a premonition, there's almost 100 percent of the time a catalyst, even if you don't know what the catalyst is, it's there or you don't make that catalytic. You got to stop bumping everything. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> such an animated person. I can't help it. So I asked <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Cat, can you give me some duct tape? <laughs> <laughs> Keep continuing on now. I'm trying to try to be still. He said, I I feel like there's just something bad gonna happen. And it's it's I can't sleep at night. It's driving me crazy. So remember now, 
it's like you're now in this downward spiral. The more you don't sleep, the more worried you are, the more distracted you are. So I say, I said, did you do anything unusual? And he said, no. Did you, did something happen to you or somebody, you know? And he said, no. I said, did you go anywhere? Did you visit somebody you wouldn't ordinarily visit? And he said, oh, well, maybe. I said, what happened? Okay. He said, well, I have a guy in the hospital and he is, he's a diabetic and um, he lost his feet and he's kind of losing his hands and, and then he died. And, and I went to see him right before he died. And I said, so what is the relationship in time between your visiting him and his death? And he said, well, this started happening right after he died. Well, and that makes sense because now I'm going to assume that this person who died was haunting him. And when somebody's haunting you, it's a distraction. It's a huge distraction. And when you're driving and you're being haunted, something happens out of the corner of your eye and you just kind of tilt the steering wheel or something and boom, that's it. And that feeling that he was haunted was he was never alone. And so I said, all right, you and I, we're going to figure this out. I I said that. I think you're being haunted by the man who died. You know, you went to visit him and maybe you have this bright light inside of you and that and maybe he connected to that. So then I talked to my L.A. brother and he said, yep, he's definitely being haunted. And um, my L.A. brother crossed him over. And after that, he was fine. And as soon as he crossed him over, it's like someone went in and said, click. And that's a really good example of a premonition changing a future. It did change the future because all my recurring dreams stopped recurring. Uh, my mountain brother no longer felt like something was coming for him or he was going to die. And I felt like we weren't going to spend Thanksgiving in the mountains. We were going to yeah. stay on the West Coast <laughs> and he was going to be fine. And that, warm and sunny. <laughs> that premonition took place 30 years ago and he's still just fine. All right. So this brings up a really good point. We talk about a lot of times how futures are fluid. Right. So you were able to change an outcome. And thank goodness, because that ghost that was attached to your brother could have killed him inadvertently. And then he would have earned the karma of having caused the death right. of a mortal person. Even though it wasn't intentional or malicious, it's still that's still the end result. Now, sometimes futures are set in stone. And. This premonition was a series. We've talked about premonitions in the sleep state. That was definitely what's going on with your brother. Um, I have one of my kids who was having premonitions while she was awake. And what was going on was for a good solid week. Now, your premonitions about your brother lasted about how long? I would say they lasted... Two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. All right. So, And my panic level was rising every night. And with my dad, it was instantaneous. Okay. Right? So there's there's no time frame, you know, it, when it comes to premonitions. We never know when something exactly is going to happen. It would be great if we had that magic wand, right? <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> so one of my daughters kept having... And I didn't know what it really, what really was happening because all of a sudden my daughter's anxiety is going through the roof. One day it was like, I'm, it was a Monday morning before school. And she goes, I don't want to go to school. Something bad is going to happen. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I don't know. Something really bad is going to happen and someone's going to die at my school. I'm like, okay, you're going to go to school anyways. And Tuesday comes along and she's like, I can't go to school. There's going to be a man and he's going to come and shoot you know, shoot up my school and I can't go. And she, you know, her anxiety is getting the best of her at this point in time. And I don't know what to really do to help calm her down because this is so real for her. The only thing I'm doing is I am writing down these notes of what she's telling me. I don't know what else to do. And Wednesday of that week, she was so crippled by these premonitions. And, and I, I'm going to say, I didn't know exactly what it was. Was it a premonition? Was it something, you know, what, what was this thing? It was so intense. She didn't go to school on that Wednesday because there was a bad man that was going to come and shoot the kids in her school and her principal. And she was just going on and on and on. And then 
Thursday, I made her go back to school and she is sick to her stomach because she's like the bad man. He's going to wear this special vest and he's going to look like this. And she's like writing down this description of what this bad man is going to do. And he's got, he's got all of these guns in his car and she's going on and on. And she goes, and there's, there's going to be, you know, teachers hiding kids in closets. And she's just giving me this litany of information. Detail. Detail of what's happening. Almost as if it had already happened. Exactly. So then that Friday she goes, she, we're going to, she's going to go to school and I have to send her to school because she's missed a lot of school from a previous event. So I have to send her to school. And she is just like, like Velcro and gorilla glue stuck to me. Like, like you can't believe. So we've got a bad man. Now he's going to shoot. She tells me that Friday morning, he's going to shoot all the little kids in the school. And my room is next to the little kids. And my teacher doesn't let us have our cell phones in the, in in the room. And it's going to be the backpack and I can't get to it. And she's going on and on and on. I said, look, I'm, I will stay in the parking lot. I will watch. I, I, I don't know what else to do, but you really got to go to school. I don't need child protective services calling me. <laughs> so on that little bit of a cliffhanger, we're going to take a break and I'm going to come back and finish this story. You are listening to the karmic path on transformation talk radio, and please check out the oil lounge.com. They are full of all kinds of great information. Especially and, for going back to school oils. Yes. And also they're now carrying CBD. So if you ever have a question about CBD, Go check them out. They are full of information. And on that note, we'll be right back. You are listening to The Karmic Path. Has your buzz for life buzzed off? Feeling ignored, invisible, and wondering if this is really all there is? The years go by faster as we gain momentum. You're halfway there. Are you gathering speed or puttering out? Hit your stride for the liberating half of life. Comfortable in your skin? You can do better than that. Tune in to Discovering You Again Radio every fourth Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as host Susan Axelrod encourages listeners to decide what they want, get inspired to action, and face challenges head on. Host Susan Axelrod pulls no punches, encouraging you to grab the brass ring and soar. For more information about Susan, go to www.whatwillyourlegacybe.com. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. What is holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at LouParadise.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. We're listening to Transformation Talk Radio as we were on a hot mic for a second there. <laughs> Good thing and, we weren't talking about politicians or anything. No, my gosh, that would be really bad. <laughs> or sex scandals or, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we are in the midst of Laura explaining what happened when her daughter didn't want to go to school because she was having this massive premonition. So take it away. All right. So it's now Friday. We talked about every day she got a little bit more information. I was just taking notes. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't know when anything was going to happen, if anything was going to happen. It felt like she was so completely hysterically irrational, but that's not who my kid is. She's pretty even keeled. So Friday morning comes and we're sitting in the car and she's like, I can't go in, mom. I can't go in. There's going to be a bad man. He's going to come in. He's going to shoot the whole classroom. And I don't know what to do. And I don't know how I'm going to find you because my teacher won't leave her phone in the, won't let me leave my phone in the classroom. And I can't even sneak it in because she's got eagle eyes and she's just going on and on and on. And then she says, and the principal's going to get killed. And she's so nice. And you know, the, there's going to be, you know, all these kids that are going to be killed and the, he's going for the little kids and not the big kids. And she's in fifth grade, but her classroom is next to a kindergarten room. So she's worried about the room next door and her. And I had told her, I said, look, I know this is really hard, but you really got to go to school because I don't need, you know, the police knocking on my door saying, why isn't your kid ever in school? And she goes to school And I told her I would sit in the parking lot and I would watch because if somebody were to come, they would come through the parking lot. It's the only way. And I let her go and she's pretty much in tears going into the school. And I turn on the radio and the first thing I hear on the radio is there is a mass shooting at a school in Connecticut. And it was the Sandy Hook massacre. And when I heard that, I knew that was what she was dealing with. Now, the weird thing is, is there's, there's a, there's, that's the weird thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. When you live in weird, weird is weird, weirder. She, she never had a name. She never knew what the shooter's name was. She assumed it was her school. She had no idea that this school was 3000 miles away. We don't know anybody who lives in Connecticut. So what was her connection to this school shooting? And I had to, you know, I had to go up to her and I had to give her a big hug. And I had to tell her there was another school shooting. It is not your school and you're going to be okay today. And I thought, you know, that was helpful and it was helpful. But now her grief of not being able to help those kids across the country was devastating. So everything she saw happening at Sandy Hook the week before. I wrote the playbook. I wrote the playbook. I have it. I have the item line by line detail of everything happening for this. All right. So. Her, her grief, and then there's this feeling of guilt that you couldn't stop it because some things already exist in the future. And she was hearing a child who had some resonance with your daughter give her a play-by-play. Was there a psychic scream, for a lack of a better term? Was That's it, a really good term. Was there a psychic scream that she was hearing in the future? And the answer is, is I don't have a definitive answer, but that's, a, I think, a sound theory. I think it is a sound theory. There are some things that are going to happen and there's just nothing you can do about it. And depending on your depending on your 
psychic ability, what may end up happening is you're going to feel the energy of what has yet to happen. And it's going to hit you like a brick, even though the event hasn't happened yet. And you won't be able to make any sense out of the grief that you feel, especially if it's a really sad event and people die in this event. This has happened to people and they don't consider themselves necessarily psychic, but it happens to people all over the world. It's we think it's unusual, but actually it's you it's know more it happens to more people than anybody gives themselves credit for. They just don't talk about it because people will think they're crazy. They're not crazy. It goes back to string theory. Your daughter was in resonance with a child who is very much like her at that school. And that resonance is something called the mind belt around the earth, which is another concept, big concept. But there's a mind belt around the earth. And and in that mind belt, there are strings of thoughts and connections. And thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are reality. Thoughts are energy. And when you have that concept, what that means is that there's a child in that school who's sending her terror into the mind belt and it's so powerful, it it echoes back in time and as well as forward in time and keeps echoing. And that's what your daughter felt. And what we did do, and maybe this was the purpose of her having this premonition, I don't know. But that night, our house became crowded with those victim ghosts. And we did cross them all over. And that was a spiritual service that we're very honored to do. And it was very heartbreaking, but it, it did help, you know, my daughter get some closure. I mean, as, as difficult as this is, you know, a lot of people wake up every day expecting to go home to their kids and their family that night. And they just don't, they don't make it home. They don't make it home. And one of the other things about this is she's never had a premonition about another mass shooting, just that one. You know, in a way, thank goodness. But um, well, here's the thing. You don't always understand why a premonition happens to you at the moment that it does. And that's why I told you about the story with with one of my brothers and that premonition of his death that blessedly because we crossed over the ghost didn't happen. And even if you thought you could cross over those children in a school shooting, you can't cross over a person who hasn't died yet. Right. It's a terrible situation and you feel helpless. And there's a part of you that has this intense longing to wish you could have stopped it. But some events already exist and they're going to continue to exist in yeah. time and space. And the best you can do is cross over the dead in the aftermath because that's a psychic service as well. It is. And, you know, she was really hit heavy with the grief of that situation. She, you know, we worked through it. It was not easy. But this is an example of an extreme premonition. And sometimes a premonition can be simply as mundane as going to the grocery store or something. You never know. Um, Or feeling like you're going to meet, you know, somebody comes into your mind. I haven't talked to so-and-so when you go to the store and that person is there. Yeah. So you foresaw that you were going to meet this person at the grocery store. Or, you know, you're thinking about somebody and they call or something like that. Those are like sort of mundane premonitions. Yeah. And, you know, I think, Tina, we have so much more to we cover. We didn't even t- nick the surface yeah. of premonitions. So let's let's agree right now that we'll talk about okay, this. we have a handshake deal here. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll talk about this next week also. We're going to continue premonitions for next week. And if you've had a premonition you want to share with us, send us an email and we'll set it up so you can call in and share it with our listeners because I think it's important that people understand it's, it's not just us. Um, premonitions happen all over the place for with every almost everybody really and before we go we also want to make another shout out about the audiobook version of soul evolution past lives and karmic ties if you have audiobooks please check it out we would be so thrilled if you would do that and if you don't now is a great time to start your subscription (laughs) on audible yes that would be fantastic for, because yeah. we're going to eventually put all of them and the ghost story books are going to be amazing on audiobooks. We're just not there yeah. yet. And Look you know, that soon. we also talked about the secret science behind intuition. It's a great class to take as well. 
And if you think we are really specific on this show, can you imagine how specific we are in our courses? Yeah. So, Especially psychic self-defense. That's an amazing course. Yeah. And we want to thank Kat Gruby, our awesome producer, who always keeps us in line, although I don't think she did a good job keeping me in line today because I kept flubbing. <laughs> Sorry, Kat, I'm teasing you. It's because you're a very ordinary and mortal in the most delightful way. There you go. <laughs> and also thank you to the Oil Lounge for sponsoring this show, and we will see you next week. Thank you for spending time with us on the Karmic Path Radio Show. Listen live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time as we explore the fascinating elements of karma and how to make those critical connections between spirituality, science, and psychology. Both of us are seasoned psychics living ordinary lives in public education and the military. Tina and I both have a deep-rooted dedication to learning how the unseen world works and to share this knowledge. Learn how to create a heightened sense of understanding and karmic awareness for greater personal balance with the karmic path. For more information, visit thekarmicpath.com. 